Let resolution be your solution. This is Francisco Cumel Nimbus with the weather report for Resolution Radio 2020. The weather report is this way. It is raining, so what I suggest you do is wear, wear the umbrellas. Go outside, no, no, wear the Wellington boots, do not wear the umbrellas. The rain, there's not much wind about, so therefore the situation is this. Uh, it's going to rain for a while, so my best advice to you is, is stay inside. If you cannot stay inside, do not go out. But if you do stay inside, make sure that the roof is not leaking and then you will not get wet. It's perfectly safe, but it's only a bit of rain. Uh, there may be snow later, but I mean, when I say later, I mean after November. Uh, I mean, I know there's four seasons in one day in this country and uh, you have to be uh, prepared for virtually everything. But uh, what I would say is, is this afternoon, at least uh, until my next weather report, uh, the weather is going to be pretty stable with, with rain falling from the sky. There are clouds and the sun will be intermittent, so therefore be careful. When the sun comes out, obviously wear the sunglasses, protect your eyes against the ultraviolet, uh, and you should be all right. Uh, the pollen count uh, is non-existent if you are in the cities virtually, but if you sit next to a window box with the flowers, obviously the, some of the pollen could be coming from there, and you will be sneezing and coughing. That is probably the reason why. So it is over to... Uh, Mike Stand in the Resolution of Radio 2020 studio. Thank you. That's Francisco Cumulonimbus from our weather department, Resolution Radio 2020. He calls it a weather department. It's more or less a glorified broom cupboard. I mean, the budget for my show is non-existent. I, all I do is try to do the best. I mean, the main thing I do is look out of the window and possibly have a quick check on Google Weather, you know, and this is how I do the reports. I mean, but honestly, it makes out his weather department. I do my best. Now then, you behave yourself. That's Francisco Cumulonimbus from the Resolution Radio 2020 Weather Station. Oh my goodness me, now he's calling it a weather station. I mean, the very best I can do is go upstairs onto the roof, have a good look around, and come back downstairs and give you the best view and best viewings that I can from my experience. I mean, what, what more does he want from me? Francisco, we're live on air. I know you're doing your best. Just keep up the good work. Thank you for uh, to Francisco Cumulonimbus, our weatherman for the weather broadcast there. Looks like we're going to have a cold spell. But uh, anyway, uh, one of the things that you might want to do to keep warm of an evening is go and see a movie or a film, as I think you do call them over here. Now, my favorite films are things like uh, The Magnificent Seven or uh, any, of the, any of the, absolutely any of the movies by John Wayne, Burt Lancaster, or Kirk Douglas, uh, particularly John Wayne. But uh, you may have your own favorite films. Uh, give us a call and tell me what your favorite, favorite films are and why. I seem to be st stumbling over all the Fs in the, the sentences here. But give us a call. I'm looking forward to receiving your calls uh, on this great topic of favorite movies. I think you're asking about my favourite film, right? My favourite film, I think, of all time, and I really enjoyed it. It was that uh, Porridge movie with Ronnie Barker and Richard Beckinsdale, right? You know, there's Mr. McCoy, the, the warden says they're going to get, you know, Jim Brooks out. Well, no, he says, I'll tell you what he says, he says, we're going to get a goodie, you know, and it, it, to play in the celebrity football match at the prison, Slade Prison, where they had uh, Fletcher, you know, for... for, for the crimes and that, but it was a comedy, right, and I thought it was great, I really enjoyed it, it was one of my most amusing films I think I've seen for many, many a year. So it seems that you particularly enjoy uh, the comedy films, uh, maybe the Ronnie Barker, uh, his uh, endeavours, is there any other uh, celebrity that you enjoy watching on the silver screen? Well, it's a pity that Jasper Carrot never made a movie, you know, something like you know, the Funky Moped, the movie or something like that. That would have been great. I would have really enjoyed that if I could have got to see it. But it never got made, so I didn't see it. But, I mean, it lives on in my imagination, you know what I mean? 
Well, I kind of do. I mean, films themselves are something of a, a feat of imagination brought to life. You know what I mean? So I do fully understand. that You were a big fan of uh, Ronnie Barker, is it? Well, not really. I, I like Lenny Goodby, the character of Lenny Goodby, right? He, I thought he was great. You know, he, he was good in, uh, in what you call it, uh, Rising Damp. You know, he played, a, he played a, a medical student in that. I thought he was good. And I'll tell you what I like as well. Timothy Spall, he's good. He was in that pair point, uh, you know, which is about the hangman and all that. But uh, not a film. It was gritty and realistic. You didn't have to suspend your disbelief for that film, really. It was just so realistic. Do you know what I mean? Were you making a pun there with the suspend your disbelief with it being a film about a hangman? No, no, it was just a slip of the tongue, really. I never even thought about it. But uh, it's quite funny, that, though, isn't it? Well, that uh, sort of sums up the uh, wonderful world of movies there with uh, a comedy which has a crime element in it, right to the serious uh, element of uh, the criminal world with uh, capital punishment. Maybe that's a subject that we'll return to uh, in another one of our discussions about whether uh, capital punishment should come back. But staying on the topic of movies, uh, I've got another call here coming from Ivor. Go ahead, Ivor. You know, asking what movies we used to go and watch. Well, I used to watch a lot of movies in the 80s. I used to enjoy the things with uh, Harrison Ford. What I used to do is save up every now and again and go there every time I felt that I could afford. So you enjoyed your movies with Harrison Ford, I gather, such as uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark or Indiana Jones, The Temple of Doom. Oh, yes, I used to enjoy such other movies as the James Bond films. You know, with his Aston Martin and, and uh, all the bombs and explosions and, and excitement and uh, thrills. Uh, sometimes I used to go so often that I could hardly afford to put the money aside to pay my bills. So did you enjoy some of the other big movies? That, did you look forward to the big smash hits that came out like Superman the movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Oh yes, I enjoyed all sorts of movies with UFOs, superheroes and the like. Uh, my movie going viewing uh, was took something of a spike. I notice you seem to be responding to everything I say in rhyme. I, do you consider yourself a poet? No, I'm just telling you what I used to see and how the way things used to be. Well, it's been very interesting talking to you. You have a good day now. As a tribute to my last caller, not making him feel ever smaller, my telephone switchboard is lighting up uh, with, with a lot of calls. It's almost like the Niagara Falls. And our next caller to talk about movies is Arthur. Oh, I did, Mike. I'll tell you what it is. I went to see a film myself the other night and... Uh... What, it, what it's all about, right, you go in, you pay the money. I think people don't always make that connection, right? It's not a free thing. You've got to go... And the other thing that they don't always seem to realise is there's other people there. It's, it's a big room full of people with sort of tiered seating where you're all sat in together with people buying popcorn and hot dogs and all that kind of thing and all stupidly big large packets of fruit pastels or something. I don't know what they are, they're crunchy sweets or something. And uh, there's all these people in there watching a film together, and it's all like kind of looking up here with a stiff neck and everything. It's all sort of something. Like... Arthur, you seem to be getting yourself into something of a frenzy there, explaining about uh, what the actual film going experience is like. Yeah, I better calm down a bit. The dogs put me on some medication. I don't know whether it's affecting me because I've had a couple of pints of beer, you know what I mean? It might be the combination of, of things. Anyway, it started out with films, it sort of like almost looked like stop motion, it was black and white. It's, it's sort of like uh, the television, but bigger, you know what I mean? And uh, there were things like Laura and Lana, and all that, you know what I mean? And uh, comedy and all that. And he seemed to use it mainly for comedy and that. And uh, the one of the first film I ever saw was a train, just a train moving. It was about 1890 or something, you know what I mean? I didn't actually go and see it in 1890 because I'm not that old, but you know what I mean? That's what it was all about. It's this train just moving. Apparently people in the, in the cinema thought he was going to run him over and he nearly fainted. Was this in your local cinema there, uh, Arthur? You're confusing me somewhat. You said you went to see a film the other night? No, it's, it's about 1890s, and it's how the films were first created. I, I was just trying to give you an overview kind of thing of what, the way things were done. The film I went to see the other night was rubbish. 
all right, well, thank you for <laughs> giving us the experience that you had the other night and try to calm down. You take care now. Well, you're right. It wasn't a great experience in the film the other night. You know what? I can't even remember the title of it. And to be honest, I fell asleep. But anyway, main thing, keep smiling. We'll all be smiling now. Thank you for your call. If you like this channel, like and subscribe our page. Share it with your friends. If you understand the underlying message here, which is about entertainment and fun. Keep smiling. Then continue to stay with us. I look forward to interacting with you in the future.